Hi, welcome to Buff Zone, sponsored by Liquor Mart, 15th and Canyon in Boulder, home for all your tailgating needs. Neil, it's uh, Baylor week, and uh, ah, but wait, I have to, we have to stop here. Okay, we have to stop right here. We have to stop I, already. We have to, we have to We're stop. Already I stopped. have to say that I have learned my lesson. Okay. Never, ever again will I pick Colorado to win at Missouri. Well, yeah. <laughs> the good news is you're not going to have to make that prediction for, for quite a while. For the foreseeable future, this, yeah, is, this you, is true. This you is might true. be in but, your uh, but, fifth or sixth decade covering the buffs but, by the time that yes, happens. But, uh, yeah, uh, you know, they, they were not the better team. Clearly not the better team. But I still would like to have seen what happens if they just make the field goals that they can make. You know, just, just play some special teams that just... Don't make these horrendous, you know. This is the this is the, Gary Pinkle's the guy that ran a fake field goal on him for a touchdown last year. Am I right? Is this not the same Gary Pinkle? Uh, same dude. Now, when they line up for that punt, I'm sitting there and people are going, "Watch the fake! Watch the fake!" Now, the people I'm sitting with are going, "Gary Pinkle's going to fake this." Somebody on the Colorado sidelines maybe should have thought of that, but oh well. Anyway, okay, now Baylor well, week. We, mu we can much move on. like much like <laughs> last year against Missouri. Uh, special teams coach Kent Riddle uh, told us today that they, they had prepared for those uh, possibilities. And, and just like last year, uh, Missouri was able to pull it off anyway. So, you know, I, right. I, starting just to, had to get that off my chest. Yeah, starting to lose, lose uh, answers here for, for what's plaguing the buffs special teams wise. But anyway, here come the Baylor Bears into Folsom Field this Saturday, led by uh, quarterback Robert Griffin. And, uh, you know, what, what's Last your... time Robert Griffin was in Boulder, what did he do? Last time Robert Griffin was in Last time was Robert Griffin was in Boulder, what did Robert Griffin do last time he was in Boulder? What did he do? Won the 400-meter hurdles. Big, ah, Big 12, 12 champ. championship, 2008. Yeah. So they, they asked Robert Griffin yesterday, what do you think about, uh, you know, the altitude in Boulder? Is that going to bother you? And his answer was, I don't know. I won the 400 hurdles last time I was in Boulder. So... That was his answer for the altitude. Yeah, it's a dynamic playmaker at quarterback the Bears have. He's coming off a, uh, a bad you know, knee injury last year, and, and uh, he's played pretty, pretty well so far this year, and, and the Buffs are going to have to find a way to contain him if, they, if they're going to win. But you know, as we know, this is a different CU team in Folsom Field than it is when it, when it leaves. I, the thing about Griffin that, that, that I looked at their stats last week, he threw for 340-something yards in that game against Tech. Uh, he has not been a prolific passer up to, this, up to this year. He was known for his running, but he's really added a dimension to his game, and I think that's uh, you know, a scary thing for the Buffaloes. Yeah, he's, uh, he's a guy who can definitely come out and throw for 200 yards, run for 200 yards in the same game maybe. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, so that's the challenge the Buffs face. It is, this, this week is a, a little bit of a grudge match, I guess, more so for, for fan bases than it is for you know, players and coaches on the field. Probably don't care much or pay much attention to you know, some of the goings on in the offseason. Baylor and Colorado were sort of pitted against each other in the uh, conference realignment stuff that happened back in June. Uh, I, I guess I'm curious. Maybe Baylor might petition the Texas legislature for a, a seven to zero head start this week. Or yeah. <laughs> definitely a possibility because uh, we all know that Baylor is an integral part of the Big Twelve. They've they've contributed so much to the success of the Big Twelve over the years. So uh, all the bowl games, the, everything they've done, all the postseason basketball, bowl games, everything that Baylor has done. So, yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. The sarcasm. We, we in in fairness, in fairness to Art Briles, the head coach down there, he's he's seems to have things going pretty well. He's yeah. turning that around. He's recruiting uh, better talent, and and I think from the Baylor perspective, you're thinking that Colorado is a winnable game, definitely, and that would be that would if if the Bears can come into Folsom Field and win on Saturday night, Baylor would be one win away from being bowl eligible for the first time in, in its entire history in the Big Twelve conference. And you pointed it out this morning, Baylor needs this win to get to that bowl because they their schedule gets infinitely tougher as the as the season progresses here. If they don't get this win, all of a sudden that bowl uh, bid 
starts to look like it might not be as a, as a sure thing as it was even a couple of weeks ago. So they, they, I think both teams see this as a winnable game. Yeah, and both teams probably should see this as a must-win game considering what they have down the road and, and the, the way their seasons have gone. And I mean, particularly for Baylor, it's what they have coming up. For in, in the case of uh, you know, Colorado, with all the coaching uh, concerns and the future of the coaching staff and stuff, this has to be a game that the Buffs win because they can't seem to win a game away from home. They have some road games still to play, and they need all the wins they can get. So I, I kind of feel like both uh, teams probably view this as, as sort of a must win. I, I don't think uh, most of the players and coaches on either team would ever say that, but that probably is the general feeling. Yeah, I think Josh Hardigan said it this morning. He said this is a game they have to win. This is a game they really need to win. This is a, Colorado's been a team that's been riding a roller coaster this year. They've been up and down and up and down. They need, they've got two home games coming up, Baylor, Texas Tech. These are two games that, that might be the most important games, home games in the Dan Hawkins era, if you ask me, because this is the, this, if Dan Hawkins is, has any hopes of saving his job, he's walking that tight rope right now. I think Dan Hawkins has to win these next two games. If he doesn't, then I think it's a then, then I think the you know the future is pretty much set. As it is, I think there's still a chance he's back, but he has to win these two games. You know, an interesting thing happened in the Missouri game. Uh, something that's been on the minds of a lot of Buff fans, obviously, in the past few days, and that was uh, Dan Hawkins. You know, in the in the third quarter, late in the third quarter, deciding to take Tyler Hansen out of the game and and put in Cody Hawkins and and see if he could get a spark from Cody Hawkins. He's made it clear that, that Tyler Hansen is still the starting quarterback, but then Tyler Hansen, after this morning's practice, made it clear that he wasn't real happy about being replaced in the game. He didn't feel like uh, what was happening offensively was necessarily his fault, and that, in his words, he thought he should be the spark or could be the spark that uh, would get the offense going eventually. And uh, so I'm just wondering what your take is on that, because it's clear to me that Tyler Hansen wasn't necessarily happy about this and, and now might be playing, you know, this week and into future weeks, wondering, you know, if I make this next mistake or if I make another mistake, is that going to be the one that gets me It wasn't pulled? the mistakes that pulled Tyler Hansen out of the game. It was a 19-0 deficit. I, I think I can find, I can name numerous, numerous instances where a coach has had a team down 19-0 late in the third quarter and said, what the heck, I'm throwing in my backup quarterback. Our offense hasn't scored. Let's see if we can make something happen. I think that's all it was. I think they wanted to get a spark out of it, see if something could happen. Cody Hawkins actually moved the team a little bit better than Tyler Hansen did in the passing game. I don't think there's any doubt. What I hope is, is that Tyler Hansen takes this as a challenge. I hope, I hope Tyler Hansen looks at this and says, you know what, I'm going to prove beyond the shadow of a doubt that I am the quarterback of this team. He's going to have the chance this weekend. He's going to have the chance next week. So, you know, if Tyler Hansen believes that he needs to be in there, this is the perfect opportunity for him to prove beyond the shadow of a doubt that this is his team. So the, I think this is a great thing for Tyler Hansen. I hope he is mad. I hope he's a little pissed off and decides that he's going to play the game of his life. Yeah, that's the vibe I definitely got from him this morning. He, he actually said that he was going to be out there with a, a little bit of a chip on his shoulder this week. So we'll see how that goes. He, he is another guy who his stats aren't dramatically different at home and on the road, but, but he is a little bit more efficient. He's at least going into last week's game, he had completed 60% of his passes at home and, and about 54% of them on the road and uh, similar uh, touchdown inter interception ratio. So, it, But he, he just seems to have a little bit of a different feel, a different aura about him at home. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he's, he's beaten some good teams here too. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how he reacts to it, how he plays on Saturday. What happens? Uh, well, I'm going to say that the Buffs come out and beat the Baylor Bears. Uh, they've beaten some uh, some decent teams during Dan Hawkins' tenure at, at uh, f you know in Boulder and at Folsom Field. They clearly play better and and play with more confidence. We saw that just you know ten days ago against Georgia and and it's a night game. And yeah, in all honesty, yeah. go back and look at the night games they played when they played West Virginia here, when they played uh, Georgia here. Uh, they they seem to play a little bit better at night. And it's a you know it's a night game, and that means we can all count on if it, if it's a win that they'll storm the field, <laughs> because you know every win the Buffs come up with at Wilson Field is worthy of storming the field. 
Yeah, you worry about that a lot more than I do. I think when you start winning a lot of games, that'll go away. But until then, you know. And, and I'll tell you what, if I'm paying 30000 a year tuition to go to school at the University of Colorado, and I want to go on the field after the game, I, by God, think I probably paid for that right. Never mind, they had to pay for the tickets. So that, that, that's, that's the least of my worries is storming the field. But we'll let that go. Colorado does win this weekend. I think you're right. The defense has played well. Overlooked in that Missouri game, I thought the defense played well in that game. Uh, the defense played well enough to give them a chance to win. They'll do that again this weekend. You know, it, if Colorado doesn't win this game, they might be storming the field for an entirely different reason. Pitchforks and torches, baby. Jeez. <laughs> okay. All right, so we'll be back next week. Uh, talk about the Texas Tech, upcoming Texas Tech game. Look at the Baylor game and uh, continue the Dan Hawkins referendum. Referendum. That's a big word. <laughs>